Well, thank you for joining us tonight for our Bible devotional. My name is John Dobbs. I'm the preaching minister for Forsyth Church of Christ. This is Daniel Kirkendall, our associate minister. And we're doing some devotional thoughts about getting to know God. And so we started last week in Genesis chapter 1 talking about God as our creator. And we're going to move on a little further into Genesis 2 and 3 tonight as we talk about the God of truth. And we talked about last week the the creation and the beautiful uh, earth that God has given us. And and we start in this chapter thinking about the Garden of Eden, a beautiful place for humans and animals alike. A clean, clear river runs through it. And uh, there's this garden and Adam and Eve are living there with God. And then temptation enters. And I want us to watch a short uh, and humorous video, uh, an illustration about how temptation works, and to kind of get our mind thinking about this idea of temptation and what we're going to do about that and how, what it teaches us about God. We can watch that video and we can see, we can, we can feel, we can empathize with those kids as they are tortured by the temptation to... Uh, to eat that marshmallow. I don't think I could make it. Oh, no, I know. I and it's just a marshmallow. I mean, there's marshmallows everywhere, but, <laughs> you know, they're always better in something or a Rice Krispie treat or something. But anyway, you know, the kids were, they were struggling, and I imagine that would be the same thing at my house. But, you know, you look back to the Garden of Eden and the temptation that was there. There were two distinct trees uh, that are mentioned in the Bible that are in the garden there, the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil and then the uh, the tree of life. And God gave... God gave Adam and Eve a command just about one of those trees. And in verse 16, he says, of, cha- of chapter 2 in Genesis, he says, You are free to eat from any tree in the whole garden. In verse 17, But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Also in the garden was an enemy who took on the form of a, of a serpent, and he, he went and provided doubt uh, about God's very clear, very direct command. And this is what he says in chapter 3. He says, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree uh, in the garden? And uh, the snake told told Eve, he said, You're not going to die. You surely will not die. Uh, for God knows that when you eat from it, actually your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So I think, unlike the marshmallow, that really wasn't the, tempt- the temptation. The, ap- the fruit or the apple or whatever it was wasn't really the temptation. It was to become like God. And this is the t- temptation that we still um, all face. And as you remember, Eve gave in to this temptation, and then Adam gave in to this temptation, and they immediately became aware that this was a, a mistake. They, they had made a mistake. They realized that they were naked, and because they were naked, they were ashamed. And so later, when they heard God walking in the garden, they had this, this harmony with God, and he was walking in the garden. They ran, and they hid due to their nakedness and their shame. He, God knew where they were, and he knew what they had done, but, but he, he approaches them in this way. He says, verse 11, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man said... It was the woman uh, you put here with me. She gave me some fruit from this tree, and so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? What is this that you have done? The woman said, Well, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So because of their disobedience, they can no longer live in the garden. Life for humans had changed for all eternity, and as long as we're on this earth. And, and God's words were true. What he said was true. And, and we begin to recognize that God is the God of truth. And even though God punished Adam and Eve and the serpent for, for their sin and their deceit, um, he still loved Adam and Eve. He made new clothes for them, so he provided for them, and he had this plan already in place um, that he would send someone to reconcile that relationship, to make things right between God and his creation again one day. Yeah, so when we get to talk about getting to know God, we understand God as a God of truth. And everything that God tells us about himself, about humanity, about the world around us, is all true because God's not capable of, of lying. If you look at various passages, a couple of them, Proverbs 30 and verse 5 says, Every word of God is flawless. And Titus chapter 1 and verse 2 says, God 
who does not lie. And so God cannot lie, and so everything that he tells us is true. And, and sometimes I know we doubt it. You know, we see a... a I can think about all the regulations in the Old Testament that they had about what they could eat and not eat and how to be prepared. And, and uh, you know, all of that was for their good because mm-hmm. they didn't have the scientific advances we have now and they didn't have the knowledge we have now. And so uh, if you go back and look at those commands, you find out all of those things were for health and for the benefit of the people who were uh, being, being given those laws. And so it's the same way with us. We, we think sometimes we know better, this won't hurt, or this won't be a bad thing. But then when we do it, we experience uh, unhappiness and we realize what God told us was true. And another thing about this story, it reminds us to be acquainted with the truth so that we can recognize when we're hearing an untruth. Because all around us are ideas, and we're hearing ideas and perspectives, and things are asserted as true uh, through all of the media. And so what we have to do is we have to be very acquainted with the Scripture so we know that when we hear something opposite of what we've read in our Bible, we stick with what the Bible says. The enemy still tries to tempt us away from God's path. I remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was being tempted by the devil. The, every time that he's tempt, that temptation came, Jesus responded with those same three words. It is written. Mm-hmm. He brings the word of God into that temptation. And that's what we need to do. We need to be so acquainted with the scripture that we can counteract the lies of Satan. And we can do that with the truth of God. That's why it's so important to study the Bible and spend time in the scripture uh, it's a comfort and a strength to us, but it's also a defense. And the Word of God uh, will always be our guide. And God is the God of truth. And so that idea of Him being the God of truth really kind of becomes a center place for our life, a foundation for our life. That's right. You know, Jesus has Scripture in His heart. And, and he, the Bible tells us that we're, we're supposed to have the Word of God hidden within our own hearts so that we can respond to these things. And so this story reminds us that we have... Um, our own desires and our own kind of, um, you know, f- carnal a- a nature. Um, and this can be a source of temptation, the things of this world. The Bible speaks at length about that. If we're not careful, we can allow our hearts and therefore our minds and our desires to be on things of this world rather than on God. And so if we're able to, to put that word in our hearts, you know, we can help defend that just like Jesus did with Scripture. And in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, it says this, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father but from the world. The world and its desires will pass away, but whoever does the will of God will live forever. And so what we see here, particularly that stands out to me, is that God is in control. God is in control of what's going to happen to this world, and it's going to pass away, but eternal life can only be found in Him. And so the temptation for Eve and Adam in the... the, in the garden, again, was not the fruit that they ate, but it was to be in control of their own life and their own destiny. And God reminds us time and time again in the Bible that He is the Lord and He's going to take care of us. And that's the truth um, that He tells us. And we, we should be able to, to recognize that. And the one way to do that is to have Scripture buried in our heart. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so, uh, you know, just from the beginning of the Bible where this emphasis on knowing God's mm-hmm. truth is so vital. And we learn from this story another thing about God's truth, and that, and I'm really glad to know this because none of us are perfect and none of us obey God perfectly. And when we fall into sin, God still loves us. It's a beautiful uh, account to me that God does stick with his word. He is the God of truth. He does follow through with what his plans are uh, when they fall. But he also makes for them clothes. And I think that is such a, a beautiful expression of grace that God still cares about them. He still loves them. He, there are consequences to their actions. But um, one consequence of their actions is not to lose the love of God. He's going to continue to love them. And so when we pray or we just think about our relationship with God, uh, you know, we, we recognize that we're, we're like Adam and Eve. We fall short, and maybe we fail often. 
but also we're like them in that we are continually being rescued by God. We're loved by God, cared for by God. Our sins are covered over by God. And so we never need, never need to let our mistakes keep us away from the Lord. I, I know people do uh, fall into a trap sometimes. Sometimes they sin and think, you know, well, God probably won't forgive me for this. And that is so untrue. Mm -hmm. God always will forgive us. And so don't ever think that your sin is going to keep God from loving you. He knows who you are. He knows your heart, and he loves you. And so our sin, uh, even when we fall, does not remove from us the love of God. And so as we think about these ideas about who God is and, and, and see God as a God of truth, we also see him as a God of love and mercy. Those things do not cancel each other out. And so I was thinking about this verse in Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 16. It says, whoever asks for a blessing in the land will be blessed by the God of truth. And so we're going to ask for a blessing and uh, have a prayer together to end this uh, devotional time. Uh, and we're going to have a prayer and then a song. But we're, we're really glad that you're spending this time with us. And, uh, and so, Daniel, uh, would you lead a prayer for us? Mm, let's pray. Dear God, we come before you humbly. We think about uh, this, this Bible study that we're, that we're involved in and recognize you as creator and, and just the... Uh, uh, the power that that took, and as we we move on from that, we see that you, you didn't create us as as slaves, uh, slaves to you or slaves to anything in this world, but free to make our own choices. And as we look for truth in this world, may we look to you first uh, for truth and recognize the difference between what's true and untrue. As we look through history and and what the Bible tells us about history, we know that your promises hold fast and you stand by those, and and we can put trust in you for those. And uh, we know that you've made promises for us in, um, in the future. And, and I pray that we have the strength and, uh, to, to, to have the, the hope in those promises and help those to direct the choices we make in our life as we resist temptation and flee from the devil. But even though we mess up, Lord, I'm, I'm so thankful for your, your mercy and your grace. And, and I'm thankful for Jesus and the plan of salvation that you gave us uh, through him and and I pray that we're able to let that light shine um, into, into every dark corner of the earth that we find ourselves in. Um, Lord, please be with us. Please be with all the people listening today and, and help us to find comfort and peace and hope in you, in your truth, and in your promises. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I, amen. if you pray that prayer, uh, feel free to write amen in the comments. Feel free to share this with somebody if you know they're maybe struggling in their relationship with God. I think uh, as long as uh, you recognize that God's there, you can battle with that all you want. And he's going to be there listening to you and hearing your cries throughout that battle. So share that with anybody you know who may need it. Um, you can share it publicly on your Facebook page or your YouTube page. And we look forward to continuing this study and hope you do too. And we'll see you uh, next week.